it's getting to be winter time in Minnesota and I'm shifting a little bit more from vehicle related videos to computer related videos and I wanted to kick it off with this really really weird machine. This is a Dell Dimension 8250. These were really really popular in the early to mid 2000s, probably one of the best selling desktop PCs on the market. And my oldest sibling actually had one of these brand new, had a 2.4 gigahertz socket 478 Pentium 4. It ran DDR 400, I believe, RAM. Uh, and it had a GeForce 4 MX440 graphics card in it, which at the time was pretty sweet. This machine, I actually don't know uh, what it has inside of it yet, but a really good friend of mine saw this at a thrift store nearby for $7 and picked it up for me. So um, I know for sure it's a Pentium 4. Looks like it has XP on it. Somebody's clearly added another optical drive to it. And it looks like the GPU is not stock. This looks like somebody may have cannibalized a higher end sound card or something like that at some point, but built in ethernet, six USBs on the back, two in the front. Underneath this kind of nifty flip out, there's also a front audio bus there. Uh, built in proprietary power supply, dated, uh, dedicated serial port. Uh, this vintage Adele was actually pretty cool because they had basically motherboard post codes, but they did it on the back and the uh, manual you got with the computer would let you do basic troubleshooting just with this code. PS2, very cool. Um, again, onboard audio two channel. So uh, let's pull it apart and to do that, you press in on this, pull the top a little bit and then I'll have to reach under, there's another button under there and I'll swing it open. This is definitely one of the most ingeniously designed cases. These things were genuinely designed to be serviceable. Um, they gave you plenty of uh, trays. Oh wow, look at this, 2002. This is a really early 8250. Um, they gave you enough sleds to actually uh, mount your own zip drive and floppy drive, add another hard drive if you so chose, and they've taken advantage of the additional optical sleds right there. So huge props to Dell on that. However, marks against them for, again, proprietary stuff. The power supply you could probably get away with replacing with a regular ATX, although these leads are a little bit longer generally. Um, motherboard is, of course, a very unique and proprietary size, unfortunately. Uh, however, it does use standard power connectors, so you have some availability for upgrades there. Uh, this GPU, not stock. It is, according to the label, it's a BFG. Really, really popular company back in the day. In fact, I've got a BFG card right there, an old FX 5500OC, new in package for a future build. This is a 68... 6800 256 megabyte. So uh, this is a really, really rare card, especially because if you see in here, it's AGP 8X. It is not a PCI Express card. Uh, when I first saw this machine, I thought it was gonna be a really, really late AGP system. And in reality, this is kind of in the sweet spot of AGP. This card was probably put in in 2006. Um, see if I can find a date on it here. I won't bore, uh, bore you with it, but I'm gonna quick pull this thing out with this toolless case here the uh beginning of kind of eps additional power they used four pin molexes to drive additional power into graphics cards so before they had a six pin pcie connector before they had pcie they had these pretty pretty common on the really really high-end late agp gpus that is the sauce that's a really 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 cool card and I was wrong. This was made in November of 2007, so a really late card. I don't know what this uh, system would have come with originally, but I'm guessing they they ran along on a pretty garbage GPU for five years before they spent the money and installed this. 256 megabyte, uh, probably DDR2. I can't actually see the memory because it's under a full coverage heatsink. But it is a factory overclock card, and the 6800s were pretty fast. That's looking pretty disgusting right there. Hopefully that's not a sign of some issue with the GPU. Looks pretty bad over here too, so I don't know if that's just an issue with like the uh, solder aging or something like that. 
Nice card though. Um, this would have really, really been the business back in the day. A little bit warped maybe, but it also has a beeper on it. I don't know why, but that's, that's a pretty sweet card. Um, the next thing of interest, and I actually find this way more interesting, you'll see that this RAM in here has heat spreaders on it. You're like, okay, what's the big deal? Almost all RAM has heat spreaders on it. Um, what you don't understand is these typically ran DDR1 memory, somewhere between 266 and 400. You'll notice right off the bat, this looks weird. Most DDR did not have heat spreaders because they didn't need it. This is what they called RD RAM. This is a RIM, R-I-M-M, -M, not a DIM. It's actually only on one side. These were, I believe, Samsung only and really expensive. The cast latency wasn't very good, but that was because this memory was about four times as fast as a good stick of DDR. So <laughs> I bet this machine absolutely screams. I'm not sure what's in it for a processor. I'm probably gonna rip that off and double check just because I'm curious, but this this would have looked even almost alien-esque back in the day with a heat spreader on it just because RAM didn't need a heat spreader. <laughs> But anyway, this is what's called RD RAM, and it is really, really uncommon, very fast. But yeah, look at that. Samsungsemi.com, hot surface, very cool. I've never owned a machine with RD RAM in it before. Back at it. So this is a socket 478, which is the later Intel Pentium 4 uh, socket. And it is a... 2.53 gigahertz, 512, 533. So that would have been a really fast processor in 2002. This thing was top of the line. It has a gigabyte of RAM in it too. Um, <laughs> whoever bought this thing had some money to spend. Um, so I'm gonna grab some thermal paste real quick. Um, scoot that back on there. And yeah, we'll get going from there. I haven't tried firing this up yet. I don't even know if it works, but I want to give it the best possible chance of survival. To Arctic Silver 5, which is one of the better pastes. So set that back on there, get these springs back on, and we'll see what she'll do. Ah, interesting. All right. She boots. Well, power's up. No post. <laughs> Not good. Um. Oh. I will have to look up Dell Dimension code things. <laughs> So that sequence right there with ABC green and D amber is other general failure. Um, so I guess the easiest thing to test first would be another power supply because it does use standard ATX connectors. So I guess I will try that. What do I have here that's uh, um, got the right connectors on it and stuff is actually my test bench. So I'm going to try that. I don't think my, oops, sorry, just one second here. I don't think my cat liked that noise. Well, that sounds terrible. Where's the beeper? was the card. I didn't have auxiliary power plugged into it. However, I don't think our power supply is the problem. All right, I'll go back to the other power supply and we'll try moving the RAM around. I feel a little bit silly using this to test, but I've got a brand new in box, never been used, Radeon VE 7000. I'm just gonna make sure get the same postcode. Is 
with this guy. I hope I do. I hope that GPU isn't fried. Different postcode. Uh, YGGY. Hmm, different postcode. So that code was IDE initialization failure. I kick it back on now. back to the original postcode but I got two beeps hmm and the weird thing is the monitor keeps kicking from like red to green it's almost like it's trying maybe I will try VGA oh, hot damn uh, I did nothing else but put this card back in and switch to VGA, not seeing hard drives. So let me plug in the IDE, see what we can do. Oh man. This is probably the first time this computer has been on in like 10 years. Yeah, that's fine. Weird. Had Debian Linux on it? That's very strange. I want to see what she'll do. A Linux with a GPU. Oh, that's weird. I was getting read uh, issues with that aftermarket creative or whatever DVD-ROM drive, so I grabbed an old IDE, actually period correct, 2002 Samsung drive. No problems. And yeah, sure enough, 2.53 gigahertz Intel Pentium 4, a gig of RD RAM, which is pretty sweet. Got a whopping single thread <laughs> of performance. Uh, and no drivers. The uh, drive I used, actually, I bought this off eBay, it came with... I almost wonder if that's a bootable Windows 98 drive. I should, I should check that. That would be really super cool if it was. Um, that's kind of funny when you find old CDs and things. Uh, this is also a 120 gigabyte Seagate hard drive, which has been put in there. This fun fact is actually the most desirable capacity of parallel ATA IDE hard drive because it is the largest size hard drive that is natively supported by FAT32, which is what pretty much every old piece of hardware uses. A machine like this would natively support uh, a much larger drive, I'm pretty sure. Anytime you see the uh, finer, you know, the hard drive cable that's not displayed like this, but it's a little finer like that. Usually means it supports UDMA and you can get terabyte or bigger drives. It would support a 750 if I put it in there, no problem, which would have been just ridiculous uh, at the time. These would have shipped with 40 or 80 gigabyte hard drives as optional, um, and that would have been pretty big. So this is back when games were only a couple hundred megabytes each tops. But anyway, don't need to put drivers on it right now or anything. Uh, I just wanted to get it up and running, and actually runs pretty nice. Of course, it's not going to know what adapter that is. I don't really feel like messing with drivers right now. <laughs> but yeah, I power it down, plug the old uh, graphics, or uh, sorry, CD drive back into it. That'll be fine. Yeah. We brought it back from the dead. <laughs> Cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. That was kind of fun.